Race to Walk Podcast, Episode 26. Welcome to the Raise to Walk Podcast, where we're walking out the life of faith. Romans 6, verse 4 reads, As Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. And this show is designed to help you do just that. Now here's your host, Carla Alvarez. Thank you for joining me for the Race to Walk podcast. Do you know what today is? It is actually the day of Pentecost. It's the anniversary of the beginning of the church and the day the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples who were waiting for commissioning in Jerusalem. So after Jesus rose on the third day after his crucifixion, he appeared to his disciples and others, explaining many of the scriptures for the next 37 days. Forty days after Passover, he ascended into heaven, but before he did, he told his disciples to preach the gospel to all nations, but before they went, they were to wait upon the Holy Spirit. So they went back to Jerusalem and waited, waiting, watching, and praying. Ten days later, on Shavuot, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, baptizing them in spirit and in power. So what is Shavuot, or Pentecost? Pentecost is a Greek word for 50th, referring to the 50th day after the festival of harvest. So since the New Testament was written in Greek, this is the word most Christians are familiar with. However, in Hebrew, the day is referred to as Shavuot. The word refers to the seven weeks that are counted to the day. Sheva is a word for seven in Hebrew. Shavua is the word for weeks. Shavuot is the completion of seven weeks of seven days. So what is all the counting about in the first place and what is the significance? When God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he asked them if they were willing to follow his commands and be his people. It is interesting in the passage that recounts this, he asks very specifically, and they say yes more than once. And this is in Exodus 19, 1 through 19, and Exodus 24, 1 through 15. Because we always have free will. Then, after that, after they had agreed to it, then Moses went on Mount Sinai to get the instructions from God to keep the covenant. In those instructions, God told them they must celebrate three festivals in his honor. The the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the Festival of Harvest, which is Shavuot, and the Festival of Final Harvest, which is Sukkot. And this is a passage from Exodus 23, 14-17. Each year you must celebrate three festivals in my honor. First, celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days, the bread you eat must be made without yeast, just as I commanded you. Celebrate this festival annually at the appointed time in early spring, in the month of Abib, for that is the anniversary of your departure from Egypt. Just as a side note, that is actually called Nisan now. When the Jews were taken into captivity, their names of their months changed, and Nisan is actually the Babylonian name for Abib. Going back, it says, Celebrate this festival annually at the appointed time in early spring in the month of Abib, for that is the anniversary of your departure from Egypt. No one may appear before me without an offering. Second, celebrate the festival of harvest when you bring me the first crops of your harvest. Finally, celebrate the festival of final harvest at the end of the harvest season when you have harvested all the crops from your field. At these three times each year, every man in Israel must appear before the the sovereign, the Lord. And then they agree to this again in Exodus 24, 1-11. And then Moses goes back on the mountain for the written instructions and is there for 40 days and 40 nights. If you know the story, you know what happens next. The Israelites thought it was taking too long, got impatient, and some of them convinced Aaron to make a golden calf for them to worship. It sounds crazy after all God had done for them and what they had just been through, 
but are we any different? Isn't it easy to get discouraged when an answer from God seems to take longer than we think it should, and we start putting our faith in other things? Any time you put your faith in something else, or make something else a priority, that is idolatry. God tells Moses on the mountain what is going on, and Moses has to intercede with God on the Israelites' behalf, not to wipe them all out. God was so disgusted with them, he told Moses that he would make his descendants great. Moses is successful in saving them as a whole, but he comes down and cleans house with those who participated in the rebellion and takes the rest who stood around tolerating it to task. If you ever read chapter 32 of Exodus, it's pretty heavy stuff. After all of that, Moses reiterates the conditions of the covenant again, and again Israel says they will abide by it. The three festivals are listed in the instructions again in Exodus 34, 18-26. So when is the festival of harvest? The book of Leviticus goes into the specific details of the law. In chapter 23, the details of the observance of the festivals are given. Passover and the festival of unleavened bread, the Lord's Passover, begins at sundown on the 14th day of the first month. On the next day, the 15th day of the month, you must begin celebrating the festival of unleavened bread. This festival to the Lord continues for seven days. During that time, the bread you eat must be made without yeast. On the first day of the festival, all the people must stop their ordinary work and observe an official day for holy assembly. For seven days you must present special gifts to the Lord. On the seventh day the people must again stop all their ordinary work to observe an official day for holy assembly. And then on the celebration of first harvest. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you enter the land I am giving you, and you harvest its first crops, bring the priest a bundle of grain from the first cutting of your grain harvest. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest will lift it up before the Lord, so it may be accepted on your behalf. On that same day you must sacrifice a one-year-old male lamb with no defects as a burnt offering to the Lord. With it you must present a grain offering consisting of four, th four quarts of choice flour moistened with olive oil. It will be a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. You must also offer one quart of wine as a liquid offering. Do not eat any bread or roasted grain or fresh kernels on that day until you bring this offering to your God. This is a permanent law for you and it must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live. So Passover begins on the 14th day of the first month, and the festival of unleavened bread begins the next day and continues for seven days. On the day after the Sabbath of the festival, that is, the Sunday of the week of the festival, the celebration of first harvest, also known as first fruits, is celebrated. As I mentioned in an episode on Passover, Jesus was crucified on the same, at the same time the Passover lamb was being sacrificed, and he rose on Sunday during the celebration of first harvest or first fruits. Even though the first day of Passover, the 14th day of the first month, will fall on different days of the week, first fruits is always on a Sunday, always. It's not set by date, it's the day after the Sabbath. Shabbat, meaning Sabbath, is a Hebrew word for Saturday. However, some people argue that the Sabbath referred to is not the seventh day of the week, but the Festival of Unleavened Bread, which is a high holy day, and it's also considered a Sabbath. So just as a side note, this definition of Sabbath actually kind of leads into a little bit of some discussion about like when the day Jesus was actually crucified. So anyway referring to the day of the week. Nobody argues that he was that he was crucified on Nisan 14, but depending on what year you think he was actually died in, this kind of goes into the whole Good Friday thing. He didn't die on a Friday, it was Wednesday, but that understanding of the Sabbath plays into that. So, how, going back to first fruits, this is actually clarified in the instructions given for the date of the festival final harvest. Okay, so listen to this. And this is um Leviticus twenty five fifteen through twenty one. From the day after the Sabbath, 
the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering count off seven full weeks keep counting until the day after the seventh sabbath fifty days later okay so he's talking about seven saturdays or seven shabbats he's not talking about the high holy day then present an offering of new grain to the Lord from wherever you live bring two loaves of bread to be lifted up before the Lord as a special offering make these loaves from four quarts of choice flour and bake them with yeast this will be an offering to the Lord from the first of your crops along with the bread present seven one-year-old male lambs with no defects one young bull and two rams as burnt offerings to the Lord these burnt offerings together with the grain offerings and liquid offerings will be a special gift a pleasing aroma to the Lord then you must offer one male goat as a sin offering and two one-year-old male lambs as a peace offering the priest will lift up the two lambs as a special offering to the Lord together with the loaves representing the first of your crops these offerings which are holy to the Lord belong to the priest that same day will be proclaimed an official day for holy assembly a day on which you do no ordinary work this is a permanent law for you and it must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live and must be observed from one generation to generation seven sabbaths are to be counted from the day of first fruit the day after the sabbath it's very clear that what's being referred to is the seventh day of the week not the first day of the feast of unleavened bread then it states again to make an offering the day after the Sabbath which is Sunday for the festival of harvest the same instructions are repeated in Deuteronomy 16 so if anyone ever tries to pull the bogus claim that Sunday worship has quote-unquote pagan or origins you can point them to Leviticus chapter 33 out of the six appointed times that God specifies in this chapter the only two that are set aside for a specific day of the week are Sunday so just think about that God likes Sunday so even beyond that it's a historically fallacious claim but if you, you don't want to spend a lot of time debunking it just point them to Leviticus 23 now on to celebrating Shavuot or Pentecost the Orthodox and Catholic churches observe Pentecost Protestant churches not so much which is I think is really kind of sad it's the anniversary of the birth of the church in Judaism the counting of the 50 days to Shavuot is called the counting of the Omer so even though there are explicit instructions to start the 50 count on the Paschal Sunday that is not when it is, it is observed in most branches of Judaism today the official calendar starts to count the day after the Feast of Unleavened Bread this year Shavuot was celebrated on the two days beginning the evening of Tuesday June 3rd and ended the evening of Thursday June 5th after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD much like the observance of Passover itself Shavuot changed from a celebration of harvest to one of a celebration of the giving of the Torah so the focus shifted a little bit but really the seven weeks of seven days represents completion fulfill, fulfillment just as a festival of first harvest was a foreshadowing of Christ who was the first to rise from the dead the festival of harvest was a foreshadowing of God's promise to fulfill his goodness to his people by the giving of the Holy Spirit and so this is an account from Acts on the day of Pentecost all the believers were meeting together in one place suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability at that time there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem when they heard the loud noise everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoke by the believers they were completely amazed how can this be they exclaimed these people are all from Galilee and yet we hear them speaking in our own languages okay so just a side note Galileans were not known for their knowledge and education they were kind of backwoods like you want to say like rednecks or that's kind of what they were it wasn't like the the place where the smart people lived 
going back to on, in verse 7. They were completely amazed. How can they this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They are just drunk, that's all. And then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as most of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you are seeing was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. And then he quotes Joel two twenty-eight through 32 In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus and Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to the cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead, or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. And that's from Psalm 16, 8 through 11. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself. For he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this, and now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he has promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven. Yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand, until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. And that's from Psalm 110.1. So let everyone in Israel know that for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of, of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children, and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about three thousand in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. 
all the while praising God and enjoying the good will of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So I've been reading Psalms during the counting of the Omer, the countdown to from Resurrection Sunday, which is first fruits to Pentecost, the festival of harvest. There are 150 Psalms, so I've been reading three Psalms each day, and I just finished the book today by reading Psalms 50, 100, and 150. The overarching theme of the book of Psalms is God's overwhelming faithfulness and goodness no matter what the circumstances. Just like the festival of harvest is a celebration of thankfulness, God always fulfills his promises. They didn't mention Pentecost at church today, but they did sing an awesome song that's just about that. It's about God's mercy and the fact that he will never, never fail us. And so let me read the last psalm, Psalm 150. The book ends with, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with a lyre and harp. Praise him with a tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So thank you for joining me today for the Raise to Walk podcast. I have the references for the verses as well as the video of the song I mentioned at raisetowalk.org slash 26. And let's end with a prayer. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and faithfulness to us. And let us never forget what you do for us. Let us be so tuned in to what you're doing that we can see the blessings that you give us in the everyday things. Let us see how you're working in our lives just through our everyday interactions because you're so awesome that you use the everyday to bring about your will. And so, Lord, we thank you for every good thing that we have because we know that it comes from you. And I pray all this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Raised to Walk podcast. We'd love for you to continue to walk with us, so head over to raisedtowalk.org slash news to get free updates. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. If you've been enjoying the Raised to Walk episodes, be sure to subscribe to our podcast. We also love to get feedback from our listeners, so tell us what you think by either rating or reviewing us on iTunes or Stitcher, or by sending us an email at contact at raisetowalk.org. We're excited to have you join us again next time for another episode of Raised to Walk.